This video was brought to you by Nebula. Today, Ireland votes in a constitutional referendum, Joe Biden says the US military will set up a temporary aid port in Gaza, and Senegal's president sets the date for a contentious election. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 8th of March 2024. Ireland is voting today in a referendum to amend the country's 87-year-old constitution by removing references to a woman's place within the home and broadening the definition of family. The government has described the current constitutional language as outdated, with wording that no longer reflects modern life. Specifically, voters are responding to two questions. The first, relating to Article 41.1, would add the phrase, whether founded on marriage or on other durable relationships, into a clause on family, and remove the phrase, on which the family is founded, from a clause related to the institution of marriage. The other proposed amendment relates to Article 41.2, which states that, in particular, the state recognises that by her life within the home, Woman gives to the state a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. The proposed amendment will remove that wording and replace it with the following. The state recognises that the provision of care by members of a family to one another, by reason of the bonds that exist among them, gives to society a support without which the common good cannot be achieved, and shall strive to support such provision. Anyway, polling suggests a sizable lead for yes on both changes, but turnout is expected to be low, and there's a significant block of undecideds, meaning that the result is by no means guaranteed. Irish Taoiseach Leo Varadkar said, I'm certainly not taking the result of the referendum for granted. I do think it's in the balance. All major parties in government and opposition have endorsed a yes vote, and there's a broad consensus that the current language of the constitution is definitely outdated, but there's not necessarily universal support for the new wording. Some say that the durable relationship's definition of family could complicate family law, as durable isn't defined, while others oppose or are lukewarm to the overall changes for not going far enough in solidifying state support for families, children, the disabled, and others. If successful, these referendums will be the latest in a series of public votes to modernise the country's constitution, which was drafted in the 1930s, when the Catholic Church had considerably more influence. In 2015, the country voted 62% in favour of legalising gay marriage, becoming the first country on earth to do so via a public vote. And in 2018, Ireland voted by around two-thirds in favour of legalising abortion and scrapping the crime of blasphemy. Now, there's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make The Daily Briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us in your podcast app of choice to listen along. With crucial European parliamentary elections fast approaching, EU leaders have begun campaigning. And the centre-right European People's Party, or EPP, are attempting to head off the rise of the far right, with plans that include greenlighting deportation deals with non-EU countries. The EPP's campaign will be explicit about their desire to reduce immigration in a bid not to lose voters to parties further to the right. The EPP's manifesto essentially includes deporting asylum seekers to third countries for processing, and imposing a quota system for those receiving protection in EU countries. Manfred Weber, the leader of the EPP, said that the policies have been worked out with the group's member parties. The EPP includes all of the major centre-right parties in Europe, including the party of European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, the Christian Democratic Union in Germany. Asked whether von der Leyen, who was nominated as the EPP's candidate for the European Commission president again, backed these policies, Weber said, All of the programmatic positions of the European People's Party are supported also by Ursula von der Leyen. But these proposed schemes are very likely to inflame tensions within Parliament. One MEP from the centrist Renew Europe group said that the EPP's plan would not work, Adding, all EPP strategy has achieved over the past years is making the far right bigger. In news from Africa, Senegal's president, Macky Sall, has announced that the country's new presidential election will be held on the 24th of March, 
following weeks of protests about its planned postponement. It comes after South threatened to delay the vote by 10 months back in early February, which triggered widespread social unrest and led to concerns about democratic backsliding. Senegalese politics has been pretty chaotic recently, since the move to push the election to December sparked violence and led to an emergency ECOWAS meeting. On Wednesday this week, though, Sal dissolved his government, replacing Prime Minister Amadou Ba with Interior Minister Sadiqi Kaba, so that Ba, who is the ruling coalition's presidential candidate, could focus on his electoral campaign. Senegal's parliament also approved a new amnesty law on Wednesday, pardoning hundreds of protesters and opposition members who have been accused of crimes with political motivations over the last three years. This amnesty bill also means that the popular opposition candidate, Usman Sonko, could be released from prison. Although he isn't on a list of eligible candidates, so he can't actually run for office anyway. Sal's announcement of the election date leaves just two weeks for candidates to rally support now, and means that for the first time, campaigning will take place during the holy month of Ramadan, when many Muslims in Senegal will be fasting. Next up, US President Joe Biden has announced that the United States military will set up a temporary port on the coast of Gaza to facilitate the delivery of much-needed humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the Strip. This comes as the Biden administration makes clear that Israel must allow a faster and greater flow of aid into Gaza by road, and follows warnings of widespread famine. This had also prompted the US into airdropping assistance into Gaza as efforts to push Israel to change course remained unsuccessful. Biden said that he was directing the US military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the Gaza coast that can receive large ships carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters, adding that no US boots will be on the ground. Now, this will take a number of weeks to set up, and the initial shipments are expected to come via Cyprus. While the move has generally been welcomed by aid organizations, many, including the UN's humanitarian and reconstructive coordinator for Gaza, have reiterated that air and sea is not a substitute for land deliveries, and no one says otherwise, especially as it will take weeks to set up this temporary pier. Our final story today is an interesting one from the science world. That's because after 15 years of debate, geologists have rejected the age of the Anthropocene, meaning that it will not become an official epoch of the Earth's geological timeline. For context, the Anthropocene is a proposed era marking the start of irreversible changes to the planet caused by humans, beginning in the 1940s and 50s with the first detonation of an atomic bomb. Anyway, a vote in February by scientists from the SQS Committee, part of the International Union of Geological Sciences, sank the proposal by 12 votes to 4. But now, the ruling, which is meant to be final, is being challenged by the SQS chair, who said that it was in violation of the statutory rules. Even if the vote is confirmed, though, this won't be the end of the drama, as a new proposal could be made. For example, declaring the Anthropocene as a geological event which isn't part of the official timeline. Essentially though, the ongoing row shows just how divisive the question of humans' impact on the planet really is, even among scientists. If you want to keep learning and expanding your knowledge, then I'd recommend that you check out Wendover Productions' brilliant series, The Logistics of X. Now, you likely know Wendover already, but in this series, they dive deeper into the logistics and operations behind everyday things, from search and rescue operations to ski resorts and coal mining. One episode that I think you'll particularly enjoy is their latest, which gets into the logistics of weapons manufacturing, something that's key to a number of topics we regularly discuss on TLDR videos, and something that directly impacts wars and conflicts around the world. It's a brilliantly researched and thorough series that's exclusively available on our streaming service, Nebula. Now, as you likely know, Nebula is a service that we built with a bunch of our creator friends and is the home to tons of smart educational content from all of your favorite creators. The best part is that by signing up, you not only get access to exclusive series like The Logistics of X, Modern Conflicts from Real Life Law, or China Actually by Polymatter, it also directly supports TLDR. That's because you signing up contributes to the budget of these big budget documentaries and helps us grow and expand our ambitions. 
So if you want to get more superb content and support TLDR, then if you sign up using the link below, you not only support us directly, but you also get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan. That's less than £2 a month. So thanks for your support and for backing Nebula.